Yeah, actually, patient presented with the sudden onset of chest pain. So, yeah, TMT was also positive. Eco showed some RWMA. So, I just, just uh, did the angiogram. It showed uh, a TBD. I'll just uh, show it to you, sir. Yes. Saran, what's the time there? Six in the morning, 8 a.m. Wow. <laughs> Here it's 9 30 in the evening. <laughs> yeah. What a time difference. <laughs> yeah. So we can see uh, here. Yeah, now we we have Maria also. Okay. Maria, ma dove era prima? Presente. <laughs> Chissà dove era finita. Scusate. <laughs> Nessun problema. Vediamo, vediamo Amit. Amit, share your screen. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sharing. You are not able right to see your WhatsApp. Right now to share the screen. I'm curious to see that. It's it's seen, sir. Now. No, no, no. Share it. You have to share the screen. Yeah. It's below. There is a green uh, bot button. You, you just push it. To share the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top video is the the green one below. Mm -hmm. The green one below is is green. This share one, sir. Yeah. No, you're not uh, sharing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Now, now it's. Uh, I guess, sir. Now, no, no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not shared. There is a pr proximal significant stenosis in the lady. I think. Yeah, I cannot see that. You, you are young, you can see that, but I'm not, I cannot see that. Yeah. Why not this? Uh, <laughs> Amit, you have to push the green button. Sir, I'm I trying to. He's in the, he's in but the phone. I'm not. All right, able to now, now it's work. It's work. Okay, let let it move. Okay. No, not oh, this okay. one. No, the previous one. This is the LED. It has a proximal. No, no, stenosis. no, no. Amit, the previous one. Yes. No, no, no. We have to this... share your video. The video. Because we see your, we see your, uh, I think mobile, yes? Yeah, we see your screen actually. Like you have to go to the Zoom. Now it's uh, it's showing, Sarah? We see. No, now we can see Sarah. Okay, just share your screen of the mobile. Share, uh... sir. Disconnect meeting settings here screen. Mm -hmm. Now, now it's uh, seen, sir. All right. No, okay. Now, okay, it's going. Oh, okay, okay. Don't do anything else. All right, great. So, okay, next. This is next, sir. Yes, thank you. Next. Okay, this is a very bad spider view. Okay. Next. Yeah, this is. Uh... Okay. So, Vashek, what, what would you do in your cat lab with this patient? How old is this patient? Uh, he, he's a uh, 52 year old male, sir. 50. And there is a there is a significant stenosis. There is a significant stenosis in LAD and in RCA. However, I don't know what is what is in sync. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, is uh, hundred percent. This sir, sir is hundred percent occluded. Sir, this is. And uh, uh, the patient patient has di is diabetic or not? Pardon, sir. Uh, the patient is diabetic or not? Diabetes. 
Yeah, he is diabetic, sir. Diabetic, diabetic. Okay. So, so my question is, uh, you send it to the surgeon. So the surgeon, what type of cabbage would do to this patient? Yes, sir. I'm sending him for this CABG only, sir. Yeah. My question is, what type of cabbage would do the surgeon do to this patient? What type you are asking, sir? What kind I of mean, graft? I mean, what graft would this uh, surgeon put on this patient? This is the question that you should uh, ask yourself when you send a patient to surgery. Okay, so you have a patient, okay, a young patient, 52-year-old, you send to the surgeon and you will let him open his chest. That's a big intervention. That's okay. Yes, That's good. okay. Because uh, if the surgeon is good, uh, it's it's okay. The guidelines say that you, you can send this patient to him. But uh, as a physician, you should ask yourself, since you saw the patient as the first one, what type of intervention is the surgeon reserving to this patient? So... Is he doing only arterial graft? I mean, lima, rima, and radial artery to the circ, to the optus marginal? Or would it he, he provide him a saphenous vein graft and one single lima or what? So I wanted to ask you, which is the type of surgery that you are sending this patient for? Well, sir, lima to LED and sir, SVG to... And so two SVG and probably. one Lima. Because my point is that if you if you put the SVG to a 52-year-old patient from the data that we have currently from the literature after 10 years, so when he will be 62, this SVG will probably be occluded. So my point yes. is, should we provide to this patient the therapy that uh, will be open for more time without the need of reintervening, without the need for doing another intervention or not. I'm provocative, I know, but, uh, you know, here it's uh, 9, uh, what is it? It's 9.45, so I already had dinner and I rushed for coming here, so I, I need to be provocative. Uh, this, Project, this, your uh, opinion. This, my opinion is quite a difficult question because we should discuss of all of those of all of those kind of patients with cardiac surgery, cardiac surgeons, uh, all time. In for example, in Poland we are doing like uh, like that. All all of those patients with previous disease, diabetes, we should discuss uh, with cardiac surgery. If the cardiac surgery, uh, cardiac surgeons will tell us that okay, let's do the PCI and we will wait uh, in the future. Uh, if we have stand failure or something like that, we could uh, perform cabbage. But in most of those patients, I think that state stand is safe. But the mandatory point in such patient is to discuss is, is to discuss with cardiac surgeon. We in Poland we are not we are not avoiding that point before PCI. It's quite young patients, and it's quite also impor important that in guidelines. Do not do not um, divide patients for young patients or, and to old patients. How to treat patients with free vessel disease and diabetes? So yeah. the, the, the the guidelines uh, directly says that we should we sh uh, it's one a indication for cabbage. But other point is that we must discuss also with patients and and. Uh, and tell the patients all of the advantages of or and the, the, the disadvantages. After ten years, we could have not um, have the the vein grafts. However, after PCI, we could have probably more interventions. And this is the, no. the crucial. Point. So yeah, uh, I, I make your point. My position is in 2024. Okay, is that the guidelines are based on uh, syntax, syntax trial. Syntax trial used a device that nobody implants since 2012 in, uh, in the world. So my point is, this patient is a diabetic young patient that should undergo uh, heart team evaluation. I fully agree with that because he, he, this is a trivestal disease. But during heart team, you should not send the patient to the surgeon. You should discuss the best option for this patient. 
Because if you go into detail of analyzing the lesions of this patient, you can see that they are not calcific lesion. They are all short lesion, okay? Today I did a CTO of 80 millimeters, okay? So these are all short lesions, not calcific, very, very, very easy to undergo PCI, okay? So you do, you do PCI here with a 0 0.5 risk of complications, Okay, and this is the, the treatment that the interventional cardiology can provide to this patient today. Then the cardiac surgeon will tell you, okay, I can provide also a cabbage with the low risk. Then you say, okay, at 10 years, which is the risk of saphenous vein graft occlusion? 80%. Which is the risk of stent occlusion? 43% at 10 years, current stent, okay? So this is something that you go, you go to the patient, and he will decide. Okay, so this is my point today in 2024. I'm not discussing about DCB. For DCB, we have uh, only a few years, three years follow up. We know that we, we think, all of us think that they are better, but we don't have data. We cannot argue on that. But we have to argue with the literature. And the literature today is saying this. So this is my point. We should discuss with the, with the surgeon. We don't have to have a fight with the surgeon. We have to collaborate with him. We, if we have a distal left main, a highly calcific distal left main, I totally agree that I would send the patient to the surgeon. But this patient, in my opinion, should be discussed. That said, in each hospital, we have uh, our equilibrium. In some hospitals, you have to send some more patients to the surgeon. In some months of the year, they need more pay. I know this. This is real life. I know this. We have to acknowledge all of that. But... Uh, to be very sterile on that, these type of patients can be easily managed with a stent, possibly also without alternative therapies, without uh, high risk of complications. This is my point. But I don't want we we I don't want to waste too much time, and I would like to leave the podium to Wojtek. We I think you have prepared a presentation on the, on how to expand correctly the stents if I'm not wrong, yeah. So, how to treat under-expanded stent? Uh, you mean under-expanded uh, acutely or after months? Which uh, is the topic of this presentation? Uh, uh, so, so uh, hello again, everyone. So today I will discuss about how to treat under-expanded uh, under uh, stent. Um, Wait a second, um, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, generally, as we know, that the, the most reason of stand under expansions are under expanding are the calcified, uh, calcified plaques, calcified lesions. So, generally, according to the current data which we have right now, calcified coronary plaques are common and the effect about uh, nearly 20 to 30 percent of patients are recurring Perkins coronary uh, intervention and adequate stent expansion has become recognized as the main factor contributing to PCI outcomes with stent uh, under expansion being the most patent predictor of instant restenosis or stent thrombosis. Moreover, nearly 42 percent of instant restenosis lesions have stent under expansion. And the, in the lower part of the presentation, you can see you can see the image uh, of the OCT where stent has been implanted in not not well prepared lesion. There and the stent expansion finally is the very low, it's 16 16 percent. And the cause of those of those stent under expansion is the calcified very high uh, very calcified um, plaques. Uh, stent under expansion is mainly caused by the presence of uh, significant calcification. On, and how can we detect those uh, significant uh, calcification? So when we see in, in intravascular imaging OCT or IVOS, the calcium arc above 180 degrees, the thickness of the calcium is more than 0 0.5 millimeters and the, the length of those calcium and the length of those calcium is more than five millimeters. We can we can assess this that um, that lesion as the very 
high cut civic lesion and after implantation after uh, after implantation directly to the stent we can have stent under expansion so in those kind of lesion we should prepare a paid attention more more uh, more to the to the vessel to the artery preparations other important point of the calcified calcified lesions are calcified noodles calcified noodles usually are located in the right coronary artery and there are they are responsible for um, quite quite high number of uh, uh, quite high number of adverse events during the long term follow up after a stent implantation. And over here in the in the in that part of the image, you can see uh, when I mark, uh, you can see calcified noodles um, in the OCT and calcified noodles in the in the in the eye. So that situation when we have. A significant calcifications. When we see in intravascular imaging, we should pay also attention quite more to prepare properly the properly the the the, the lesion before stent implantation. Otherwise, we could have stent stent under expansion. As I mentioned before, a stent under expansion it is also one of the most reason of the stent of very very late stent thrombosis. Uh, it's one of the fourth more often uh, cause of the stent thrombosis. First is malaposition, the second is neoterosclerosis, and our uncovered the lesion uh, and uncovered of the stent shards is the third part, and the fourth part is the stent under expansion. So it is the stent under expansion is a really high, uh, pay, uh, high, very high. Um, uh, is quite important and uh, could generate the stent thrombosis during the long term follow up. So, uh, nearly 44% of stent thrombosis lesions have stent under expansion. Over here, you see also the, the OCT image of, of patients with stent under expansion. Over, see, uh, over here, you can see the, the thrombus, which, which has been generated by stand un under ex uh, stand under expansion. So, uh, yeah, Wojciech, 44% are taken from this study by Adriansen. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I wanted to understand. So in this study, they just took some implanted stand, they did an OCT, and they saw that 44% were not correctly implanted. Were not correctly expanded, yes. Not 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 correctly expanded. Okay, okay. So this is a big, very big number. And uh, which which was the cutoff for the consideration of these stents not correctly expanded in this study? General uh, generally the stent uh, 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 generally the well expanded stents definition is when we have uh, more than more than 80% of, of stent expansion. So in when we have stent expanded more than 80%, we can define the, 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 the procedure and the yeah. stent. So if we have a, a 3O, 3O stent, a 3O measurement on stent, which means that we have a stent pre-mounted on a balloon that at the nominal pressure will arrive at three millimeters. So this is a 3O, 3O stent. So a trio stent, which is not expanded following this classification, means that uh, you do a, a after post dilatation. <coughs> Excuse me, after post dilatation, you do an OCT, and you see that the minimum minimal lumen diameter is uh, below two point four. Okay, so this is the current uh, uh, definition of a not correctly expanded stent. But my question is: In this study, they applied this methodology. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what was the methodology. But generally, uh, the methodology, the cutoff is 80, 80 uh, yeah. percent. No, no, I agree. You, you are completely right. But uh, forty-four percent is a huge number, and is very worrisome. So this is why I ask you: Maybe in this study they applied another cutoff. This was a question. No, I'm not sure about that, but for, yeah, yeah, because forty-four percent is a is a is a huge number. So I was worried by this number. Oh, f thank you for for the comments. So as as uh, I managed before, the the uh, the stand expansion after stand implantation should be should be expanded over 
the 80 percent and those information is from the expanded consensus document of the European Association of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. And in all of those kind of the PCR, when we are not sure, we should assess the intravas uh, intravascular imaging because uh, in intravascular imaging compared to angio, we can see more. And we are more sure that stem is well, uh, well, well um, expanded. So, uh, it is quite also important to prepare the lesion before before stent implantation because when one stent um, uh, under expansion or cures for the treatment options are quite limited. Usually after stent implantation we use NC high pressure balloon uh, uh, high pressure balloon angioplasty. However, in the other hand, right now. We have quite a new new technology, which is in mark end. The new technology is intravascular lithotripsy, and I would say the open OPN and C coronary balloons. The other kind of treatment which we can assess, but it is quite quite rare in the generally in the cat labs, uh, are the uh, are uh, is the laser after after coronary uh, coronary artery. Uh, after PCI with stent implantation, uh, and and the uh, the optimal treatment of stent under expansion caused by calcium plus is right now debatable. Which should which method we should use after stent implantation, and we have uh, stent um, under expansion. Generally, we have two uh, three kinds of method which we can use. However, there are very little number of patient, of studies which assess laser after stent implantations in the after acute stent implantation. I would say there are some data about intravascular lithotripsy and some data about o o o OPN and C coronary. Yeah, the only um, the only thing, uh, um, Wojciech, let me be a little bit more uh, provocative. I'm not sure that we can say that we can use intravascular lithotripsy for any type of stent under expansion. Because the data that we have is that uh, IVL is working well if we have calcium. And I admit that many of the causes for stent under expansion are related to a highly calcific burden, either a calcific nodule or a concentric calcification. But there are causes for stent under expansion not related to calcium and then I'm not sure that here IVL is a, a good treatment option. Yes, yes. Thank you for the comments. Uh, uh, Bernardo. Little tripsy when we have calcium. So it is, it is, it is. Yeah. Uh, it calcium, but I will uh, uh, later. But Sandy, I have a slightly different opinion on this. Uh, because uh, I know please. it's completely off-label indication. But if you have a big chunk of calcium behind the stent, I rather take a shockwave balloon, and even if I disrupt the stent polymer, I'm happy to put on the stent than taking a very high pressure opium balloon, which will end up in perforation. So although it's off label, there are plenty of case reports. And no, 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 uh, in no, Sandeep, uh, uh, no, no, you didn't get my point. My point is that if you have calcium, <laughs> IVL is working always. I agree. And that's the best option. In my yeah. opinion, my first choice is IVL. I was saying that if you don't have calcium, but you have the stent underexpanded, so IVL you... is oh, yeah, not then working. Uh, then you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah so I, I agree with you. But, but, Wojciech, please, go ahead. So uh, right now I would try, I would like to present one of the cases which we have performed uh, one and a half year ago. The, here you see the, the coronary angio of the patient, 50-year-old uh, patient, which was referred from the peripheral center to the our hospital. It was the, the, the area when RVL was not quite common in all the, the cat labs. And the patient two, day, two days before our ad, admission to our hospital had, had uh, ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. And during those acute situation, the stent has been implanted to the LAD. They had two, two stents has been implanted to the uh, LAD. There was this. There was the preparation by the balloon. However, it's not not not, not sufficient. So, in the left part of the of the slide, you can see the angio <laughs> with 
and in the mild part of, uh, of LAD, there is the lesion, and those lesion is caused by the stent under expansion. And those kind of the stent under expansion is because there is the very, very high calcium behind the stent, which has been implanted two days before admission to, to hospital where do I work. In the right part two of days. slide- Two oh, days, two days before two days. this one? Two days, wow. two days, there were two days. And, but it was the time when, when IVL was not quite uh, common in the cat labs. Um, and okay. in the right part of the slide, we can see the OCT, which showed that there is very, very, very narrow lesion in the in the part where is not uh, not where is not significant where, where is stand under expansion. So those stand under expansion is caused by the by yeah. the. Um, uh, let's uh, uh, let, 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 thank you, Wojtek. This this is a great case, but I would like to be uh, try to be didactical also for uh, Amanda, Sarah, and Jasin. Uh, you know, which is the problem to your knowledge of stent under expansion? Any of you, if you want, if you want to comment, or I, I can go ahead. Yes. Amanda, Sarah, or Jacinth. Thrombosis. Yeah. Thrombosis. Stent thrombosis. Yeah. The problem. Yeah, that's that's a point. That's one of the risks. One of the risks is uh, is the, the 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 thrombosis, which can occur within days, weeks, or months, or years after the stent. And the other point is that this is a region which is more prone to restenosis also, to neo-intimal hyperplasia, and then later on uh, neoterosclerosis, and uh, also to calcifications. Today, I did a case of a stent which was not well expanded. Uh, we did IVUS, and we had a, a calcification outside, but also inside of the stent after three years. So stent thrombosis is one thing. The other thing is also a higher risk of restenosis. Okay, thanks, Vojcik. Please. All right. So uh, uh, before before uh, uh, IVL, the distal reference diameter was three point zero. Proximal reference diameter was 3.0 and, and in the area where was the stand under expansion, MLD was 1.3. So it's very, very, I would wow. say very high stand under expansion. Yeah, after, very after severe. A, a very severe stand under expansion. So the decision was to perform a IVL in, in, in such a patient. And there is quite important that in such lesion, was only one part of the stand, no more, one part of the stand. And after after 80 pulses, after 80 pulses of the IVL, because IVL right now in the old generation had 80 pulses, and new generation of, I, of I, IVL has 120 pulses. However, that, 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 uh, that procedure has been performed one and a half years ago. And we admit to, the, to those patients 80 pulses. And you see the expansion of the stand is 92%. So uh, it's very good results. We don't need 100% uh, in such patients. 90% yeah. in such patient is, in my opinion, is quite good, uh, good results after, after, um, after the, the PCI. So there was no any dissection uh, after um, after PCI. So all of those procedure was quite safe, fast, and um, and uh, the, the efficacy was was uh, quite good. And I would say also that uh, PCI with IBL it's quite it's quite easy compared to retablation, which could could be could be uh, which could take a longer time. Uh, so. Um, so uh, before before IVL we had MLE one uh, one point three and final result results uh, was uh, three point zero. Yeah, because... I would like to comment on this. So I think that you did a great job. I agree with you that ninety two percent of uh, uh, stent expansion uh, is uh, in a calcific lesion uh, is more than enough, and uh, so it's it's a very good result. But this should let, let us understand uh, how it is important to address the lesion types before stenting implantation. So in this uh, referral center, 
uh, this peripheral center, they probably underscore the importance of these uh, calcific lesions. So they just put a stent. I don't know if they did the predilatation or not, but for sure they didn't understand how it was important to prepare correctly the lesion before stenting implantation. Because any treatment that we do afterwards, it is less uh, efficacious. So you have done a great job, but you know that uh, also after this great job, the risk of uh, events is still a little bit higher than if they had prepared the lesions correctly. So this is a good lesson for all of us uh, on how it is important also, not only for DCB, but also for stenting to correctly understand and then treat the lesions, the complex lesions. All right. And uh, that that case uh, gave us idea to perform the, the study, IVL Dragon Registry, so, so we performed the, quite one of the biggest registry of the underexpanded stand caused by calcified lesion um, in the in the in Poland, and we not, not all of those patients in those registry had um, intravascular imaging guided uh, PCI. Uh, 40 pa 14 patients in that registry had um, OCT guided, 13 percent. Uh, I was guided PCI and mo more than half, so 60, 60 patients uh, only, only I would say QCA guided PCIs. However, after my, uh, my uh, after, um, uh, uh, however, I think that uh, uh, intravascular imaging is quite mandatory in such kind of the procedures. And right now we know that patients with intravascular imaging PCI has better result in copper. No, with uh, without intravascular imaging. However, what this study show, this is one of mm, the first study generally in the world which perf which has uh, which assess an under expanded stent, which assess under expanded stent by by intravascular lithotripsy. We have quite good results, as you see in OCT. Most of the patients, um, uh, most of the patients had a better stent expansion. Than finally, post IVL, MLI, MLA was bigger, MSA was also bigger. The the maximum calcium angel was smaller after after IVL. The maximal calcium thickness was also smaller. And what is also also important from the uh, from that uh, that study is that we did not have a a big number of adverse events such as perforation or dissection. The procedural success was, was achieved in 72% and the definition of the procedural success was stand expansion over 80% without any complications during the, the PCI. Yeah. So um, what what the study also add in which patients we did not, uh, we tried to find the answer why did why we did not find um, one hundred percent of the procedure, procedural success and which kind of patients did not um, did not have uh, did not have those kind of results? So patients with more than two layers of the stent, it's uh, could not have the optimal results after IVL, and patients with chronic kidney uh, in patients with chronic kidney disease also the payroll of the of the procedural success after after IVL. However, the most important for, point for me as an invasive cardiologist is that when we have two stand layer and uh, uh, stand under expansion, the I feel IVL could not work properly in compare to the situation when we have only one stand layer and the calcification, even deep calcification. And the study showed that the, the, the 30 days and the long-term follow-up was, was quite, uh, quite good. We did not find any, any uh, high number of the adverse events during the, that uh, period. And at the end of the presentation, I would only show. I would. I would like to show you the, the the the, the latest study which we want, which we are nearly to to, to finish. IVL Elka uh, Dragon Registry. So we assess over here the patients with with lithotripsy and a laser. 
and we compare to that uh, and try to find uh, any difference between that that to, to that methods as you he see here in the left level um, left part of the study the, the patient has been treated by uh, lithotripsy and over here in the left in the in the left part you can see the cracks uh, of the calcium after intravascular uh, lithotripsy, which has been known found in the patient uh, which has been treated by laser. However, the uh, the results of the stent expansion, uh, which compare which has been compared by IVL and ELGA, uh, is is quite <clears throat> the same, and the results are over seventy percent. So, using those two two uh, two two methods we can achieve quite a good results with the procedural success seven more than 70 uh, 70 percent so thank you for for attention okay thanks for check very nice case. very this nice was, presentation this was very nice presentation with a lot of information uh, useful information also for those that do not practice interventional cardiology every day of uh, of their life um, I have a question for you. Uh, how is uh, ELCA and, and laser uh, developed in uh, in Poland uh, so far? So, Do you so, use it? Uh, uh, one year ago, one year ago, we had, or two years ago, we had only one center. So Professor Waczynski, which you already uh, met uh, uh, in the Zoom. And right now it's, it's, it's going to be widely expanded, widely expanded. I think okay. in, in next year we will have, I think, uh, seven, eight centers with laser. Wow. Is, right now, I would say this is the passion for the laser. Uh, and uh, the, the laser could be... More, more, more. Sandeep, uh, can you mute, please? The, the advantages is that that laser could be used in the invasive cardiology and also in the electro uh, uh, electrocardiology for the uh, for the TLA and uh, i think in next year we could have eight centers in poland which use which, which will use the well, laser it's uh, it's a, a, an unbelievable increase uh, i was surprised here in india how it is developed this technique and is it diffused in this technique amit do you do you use it Krupal, Jagan, do you use this technique? Do you have a lot laser in your cut lab? Um, no, currently I'm in the UK. Um, when I was back in India, in my lab, there was no laser. It was actually, no laser. the cost okay. was extremely high. It's very high. It's very expensive. Very high, so. But I think the the disadvantages of those methods was uh, some years ago, there were some publication about the use of laser and that uh, PCI with laser, it's, it's, it's not safe. There were some dissection, some perforation. There's, um, there's a, some, one publication from, from England which showed that after PCI, after laser, it's, it's maybe it's, I can say that it's not safe, but there were a lot of perforation dissection and it is reduced the penetration. Laser. Yeah. Uh, there is a question by Jacint. Yes, hello. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the presentation. It was very interesting and nice. Uh, I'm not an interventional cardiologist, but I really found it interesting. Uh, so my question is, uh, following what Dr. Cortese was uh, explaining to uh, to us, when he mentioned that the primary risk for uh, under-expanded uh, stents was thrombosis, and then uh, secondly, it would be uh, instant restenosis. So my question is, do we fear also the risk of migrating stent? Because um, not so long ago, I read a case report uh, mentioning that there was a atrial ventricular block due to migrating stent, and I was wondering if it could be due to under-expanded stent. Uh, this is a good point. Uh, I think that the focal under-expansion due to calcification, like the one that the Wojtek presented, uh, is... Uh, a protection factor for migration of the stent because you have a blockage of the stent. That said, if a, a stent is completely underexpanded because it's not uh, well expanded at the beginning, yes, of course, you don't have 
uh, the metal uh, correctly um, attached to the vessel wall. So this could be a reason for the migration of the stent. But so far, stent migration is not a big issue in interventional cardiology. I would like to to know, you know, Wojciech, also your opinion on that. Uh, but, you know, we have we, we used to have stents that did uh, 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 either elongate or uh, shorten uh, in previous version of stents. But uh, stent migration, unless they are placed in a very proximal part of the coronary arteries is not a big issue currently. Okay, I see, I see. Thank you. And what's your, what, do you have any, uh, do you use OPN balloon in your centers? Yeah, we, we use OPN balloons, but uh, as you said, uh, my first choice is IVL. Uh, OPN is a non-compliant balloon, uh, for those that do not know it, uh, which you can expand at higher pressure. Normally, a non-compliant balloon has a bars pressure, which is maximum pressure between 18 to 22. Uh, then you can go to 24, it's, nothing happens. The OPN balloon can arrive up to 35 uh, on label, but you can also reach 40, 41. Uh, so this is a balloon that will maintain its shape, reaching very high pressure. Uh, my my issue there is that if you have a calcific nodule, with this pressure, you can just push the calcific nodule outside without cracking it. You can crack uh, a, a thinner calcifications with the OPM. It's working. I think it's working. But for a calcific nodule, you can just dislodge it and there the risk of perforation is a little bit higher. So in these cases, I prefer either to ablate the calcification or to use IVL to crack and to reduce the strength of the calcification. Uh, I have a doubt. Um, so how safe is it to use the OPN after stenting in such under expansion and go to high pressures? Like if you go to 40, like is it advisable or wouldn't it? Uh, like uh, damage the stent. Like... It, it, I think it's it. We can say we can say that it's not safe, but we can we should choose smaller balloon when we use OPN balloon in comparable to the vessel uh, size. Zero point eight, zero point seven. This maximum size of the zero point seven um, size of the of the of the lumen. To use smaller OPN balloon uh, in compared to, for example, NC balloon which you use, and uh, and and it is, in my opinion, it's, it's quite safe strategy. We have OPN uh, in the in the in our cut lab, however, quite more most often we use the IVL. Excuse for me, I have a question: In patients with two uh, double layers of stents plus a stent under expansion. You mentioned that IVL is not working. So which other technique will you use in those kind of patients? A very good question. There's we have no. only we have only laser and and OPN. However, there's no 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 data. There's very few data about how to treat standard expansion, really. Yeah. The, 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 mostly if you have two struts. So you have implanted a stent. The stent is uh, uh, has led to restenosis. Um, so probably you had done some mistakes sometimes. Not not always, but you know, uh, restenosis is associated to some, in the vast majority of the cases, to some initial issues with the lesion. Uh, then you implant another stent uh, to treat it, and you ended up with a. The second stent uh, not not expanded, so you have done two problems. You created two problems, so at that stage it's not easy to expand the stent. I agree with Doitech that you can use an OPN, you can use a, a no compliant balloon, but if you don't have a calcification outside or inside, you cannot use uh, IVL. So Perfect. yeah, the only things to do is uh, high pressure balloon. 
And for sure, do not implant, do not implant third, uh, <laughs> the third step. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's a very good point, uh, uh, not to put a stent again. In fact, uh, sorry, I had to, I was doing a case in Britain. We've got a same case we just discussing. So if there is a time, I can show that case. Or if people are tired, don't worry. I'll yes, please. No, 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 please, please, uh, Sandeep. So it's the thing here is this exactly what you were showing. So we had a lady who had a stent put in a few years ago in the intermediate. I'll show the pictures in a minute. She came back with a severe restenosis uh, only two weeks ago, and the operator did the procedure without any imaging, without much uh, uh, IVL, nothing. And uh, very suboptimal results. Uh, they used the DCB. And uh, now came back literally three weeks later with more chest pain and troponin elevation. And I will show you the case. Um, it's a very, very interesting case. Let me just... Uh... You are in Bangladesh, Sandeep. Sorry? Are you in Bangladesh? No. no, 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 no. I'm in England. Ah, you you are. So today is in the cat lab. In my cat lab. Okay, hold on. Let me show or you. The high bifurcation stitching. X rays off. Um, can you share the screen, uh, Sandeep? Sandeep. Can you see? Hello? Yeah. Can you can you share the screen so we can see it uh, in, in a larger way? Like this, you mean? No, no. Share. Just you put on the iPhone, you just click on the green button. Oh. Sorry. Just mistake. to share it. Yeah. So it's we can see button. it uh, in a larger way. Um, and what <coughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, some minutes I must go. Oh, you, you have to go. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. Sorry, thank thank you, Voucher. Thank you very much for this great presentation. Uh, see you so, soon. See you soon. Bye. Good night. Bye bye. Can you, so, can you Sandy, see or? No, we can, can see, see that you are sharing screen. Just try to. I don't know what is it, uh, what you can do. No, try again. Oh, okay, we can, okay, we see from here that it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So severe, severe restenosis, yeah? Yeah, okay. I'll now show you the, I'll show you the iris. But this happened now? Yeah, live like a hot from the press. Wow, and so it happened with the. Uh, it's a STEMI. No, uh, yeah, ACS. ACS. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, look at here. Can you see? Yeah, easily. Clearly. Yeah. So it's a belly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then this is the post IVL. I'll show you the post I will now. I use now it's okay. The sink gets bigger now because the vessel's bigger here. Okay, now this is post IVL. It's a lot more circumferential, isn't it? Yeah, so it's more expanded. But of course, the you know there's a lot of ISR tissue in there. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's much more expanded. Is this the area? And then, of course, the, the, the we zone? decided to go for a stent because uh, we didn't think uh, the DCB will give a good result, especially there was a... Also, we did a DCB last week. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there was... Uh, uh, yeah, still calcium. Yeah, 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 yeah. So mechanical. So this is post-stenting. What, what, what size of IVL did you use here? Three, three millimeter IVL. And three. we put a three millimeter stent, but taken to 3.5. This is double NA. Good job. Lovely. Sorry. So you see that now? And I'll just show you the angiogram in a minute. Yeah. So now we'll show the angiogram. No, she won't come back now. Nice. Yeah. You see the it's a very really big, it's a very big uh, it's a very big vessel, yeah. Yes. Anyway, it's a good case. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for presenting this. All right. So are there next week? Yeah. Bye bye. Ciao Sandy. Any other no. question? No? Okay, so it's uh, 60 minutes almost. I think we can close this lesson. I see you next week. When are you coming back, Sarah, to Milano? Soon. <laughs> I hope to like, can be back <laughs> soon, yes. No. <laughs> so, which is your evaluation for Vancouver? A nice city, <laughs> but quite expensive. One to ten. No, no, no. Harsh. One to okay. ten. Okay. One to ten. In compared to Milano, it's like zero. Minus one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is what, where I wanted to come. Okay. Thanks. So, thank you. We have the next, next lesson. Uh, should be, I don't remember, of course. Let me see. Next week. Yes. Uh, it's uh, on Tuesday. Critical thinking. Oh, we have the critical thinking. Yeah, I will be actually in. Uh...